Hello everyone, welcome to the Hypergamous Journey. At this channel, we discuss dating advice for women who are mature and want to partner, marry a man of a higher social and economic level. Or at a minimum, marry a man, partner with a man who is where they are at a minimum, at a bare minimum. So Ebony K. Williams did a response to the quote, black backlash that she received from her interview or discussion with Iyamba Van Zandt. It's a very short video. I will put it in the description and it's like five minutes. And so she said that she that people miss the point not that she thinks a bus driver is beneath her her mom she said her mom gloria was a bus driver for many years i'm not sure where ebony is from if she's from new york but you know i'm from new york city and so when you come from humble beginnings getting a city job of any kind is considered you know move a movement in the right direction and I also, and in the end of her video, her response to the backlash, she said that her point was to make people think about entrepreneurship and ownership. So I grew up in the 60s and I'm from Harlem in New York City. I was on the periphery, on the outside of Islam, the nation of Islam, at the time run by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and now 50, 60 years later, run by Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I was never a Muslim or a nation of Islam Muslim, but I grew up in that, on the periphery, on the outside of that movement. So I grew up in the um, civil rights movement, the nation of Islam movement, uh, the feminist, first wave feminist or second wave feminist movement. I grew up during the Black Panther movement, equal rights for women movement. I named five movements that I grew up in. And so Ebony at 40, me at 62, I see what she means about entrepreneurship. And honestly, I learned about entrepreneurship from the Nation of Islam. I know people said they taught hatred and all this other kind of stuff, but I was 12 or 13 when I first started reading the Final Call newspaper. And I even heard of the word entrepreneurship. I knew it had a lot of ease. I didn't really know how to pronounce it. But I read everything in that newspaper regarding entrepreneurship. And then, actually, I read the newspaper from front to back. And we got it every week. My, my uh, stepfather brought it home every week, laid it on the dining room table, dining table. And I read it. I love to read. That was that kind of child. So I understand where she's coming from when she says, you know, mediocrity with with. We're talking about black men here, not all, but a large, I mean, I see it every day in Atlanta where, you know, these guys, young men with their pants sagging, look like they smoke plenty of weed, look like they don't wash. They just look horrible. America needs an underclass, I'm getting a little political. America needs an underclass to take care of the grunt work. Before it was us, domestics and stuff. Now it's uh, Spanish speaking people and any other immigrant that comes after us, meaning arriving in this country. But the thing about immigrant people is they know the value of entrepreneurship, small businesses, you gotta start small. Entrepreneurship is this really big word is polysyllabic, but you don't start off really as an entrepreneur in the true de definition of the word. 
You start off as a small, as like a side business that becomes a small business, that becomes a medium-sized business, that then becomes an entrepreneur, an entrepreneurial endeavor, if you can get some financing and all that other stuff. So we've glamorized entrepreneurship, but in the beginning, it's a struggle. So I get what she's saying. She said, I want to date the bus, the, the bus owner, not the driver who's going to be employed, you know, for the next 30 or 40 years. And there's nothing wrong with employment because employees make the world go round and they make the employer richer, richer and richer. And that's the way, you know, it is in America. And that's why people are willing to die to get here because they see what we have here that we seem to take for granted. People who are born and raised here, what we seem to take for granted. People from other countries, immigrants see, is, see it as opportunity. And as soon as they can, they will work five or 10 years for someone and then start their own business. Start their own business and become very successful at it. So again, I don't see anything wrong with Ebony K. Williams and what she said. I don't see any uh, with her first video with Iyanla. Iyanla grew up in New York City. So bus drivers are, you know, everywhere. They drive the buses in our community. They can make a good living doing that. And some people, they don't have a desire to go out on their own and have their own businesses. It's not easy. We glamorize it, but it's not easy to do that. So they'd rather just have a job, security, come home, give their paycheck to their families, do what they got to do. It's, there's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with bus drivers or any other city worker. There's nothing wrong with being an employee, period. And if that's not good enough for you and you want more, there's nothing wrong with that either. I think there's enough in this world for all of us to go after what we want including women wanting to marry men, mature women wanting to marry men who at least have what they have financially. That's all, at least. Ebony wants somebody who's a, who's, who, a man who has at least what she has. There's nothing wrong with that. I want somebody who has at least what I have. And there's nothing wrong with that either. And we on two opposite ends of the spectrum. And it's all good. It's all good. So if you like this video, any of my others, you know what to do. Share, like, subscribe. And um, remember, hypergamy is a journey and not a destination. See you in the next video. Bye.